Hey guys, let's continue talking about sampling distributions. Now, if you remember, last we spoke, we were talking about the statistic versus the parameter. Talking about how the statistic is about the sample and the parameter is information about the population. And we were talking about the idea of a sampling distribution, but on this particular video, we are going to be talking about a lot more detail what a true sampling distribution is. And as we continue to talk about that, let's back up a little and talk about the idea of sampling variability. So as you see this right here, sampling variability, first of all, we always know low variability is better. That's a given. That's the mantra of statistics. But what is different from a sample, sampling variability versus what we've done before? With the sampling dis, um, um, variability, we are given many samples, okay? And given those samples, we are finding their values of x, their x bar. Okay, so let's say, as I clear up what I just said, um, one sample we have a mean to be 20, another sample we have a mean to be 21, another sample we have a mean to be 25. That right there is sampling variability. Because our overall idea is that we want these to get closer and closer to that of whatever the population mean. So here we're talking about different means of the sample, averages of the sample, and then based on the averages of the sample, we are um, look, seeing what those values, how those values deviate. Let's say for the sake of argument, if I in, in class ask, okay, how much money do you have in your pocket? Now some people will be broke, and then some people will have 50 bucks. Don't know why. Now this is my class. And let's face it, I have juniors and seniors. So this is going to be one sample. This is class one. Okay, here, a second sample. This is class two. Let's go over to my neighbor. Now she has freshmen. And given that she has freshmen, most of them are going to be broke. And most of those freshmen aren't going to have $50. I wouldn't trust my freshman kid with $50. So they might have at most $10. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the average of her class, and let's say the class average is um, 5 bucks. And let's say my class average is, let's say that it's going to be 10 bucks. Well, what I'm going to have to do is take a bunch of different samples. Okay, here's the average of the first class, average of the second class. I go to my next um, neighbor, a lot of juniors and seniors. She's going to have, let's say, a mean average of money in the pocket. And let's say that hers is $15. Well, she has mostly juniors and seniors. So, just like us, she's going to have a bigger mean value. This is what a, a sampling variability is. It's not of individuals, it is taking the average of the group and then showing what it looks like on, why not a dot plot? So here's five, here's 10, here's 15. So here's one class, here's another class, here's a third class. If I say average in their pocket, Here's another class here, average in their pocket. Okay, and remember what we're talking about here is the class average, taking how much money they have in their pocket and getting the average. Now I want to continue talking about sampling distributions. We're going to do recess pieces tomorrow in um, class. But let's go back and piggyback on what I was mentioning here. Okay, here sampling distributions, it's the X bar or a P hat, because remember this is the statistic for your um, group. Okay, here's a statistic 
um, in terms of the proportion. I should have mentioned that to be the mean. Okay, and so for all possible samples, all possible samples with the same sample size. And tomorrow when we play with the Reese's, and what we actually did play with, remember, here we had, we have values like this. And remember, this was considered one sample. And we, there was a bag of candy, so this was one bag of candy. Here's a second bag of candy, third bag, fourth bag, et cetera, et cetera. And as we listed all of the values here, these are the average, we were talking about the color orange in one bag, average color in another bag, average color in another bag. So the reality is we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bags of candy in which the orange average, okay, if I remember correctly, the number of pieces of candy was 25 in there. And here we could have had anywhere from eight oranges to, let's say here is 10 oranges. And here, let's say that this one is 12 oranges. But see now, let's look and see how many bags I have here. So N equals the number of candies in the bag. Okay, so not exactly sure when it cut off. So here you've got one bag of candy that has 25 pieces. And here you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 bags. So here is your distribution on the average number of candies that are orange in this case in each bag. So as we play with it tomorrow, we are literally going to be doing, um, describing the, um, in the distribution and we're going to be finding our socks like we too often do. Okay, now... I want to look at number seven from your homework. Number seven from your homework, please read the directions. Pause. Okay, so they said that they wanted two digits. So here, I did it systematically, two and six, two and eight, um, two and ten, etc. Then find the average of those two digits. And I did the same thing here. Now, since I don't have this, I've got six and eight, six and ten, six and ten. So that's where these values came from. Now, I found, um, after doing that, I found the average of each of those. And what I'm going to do is plot them. This, ladies and gentlemen, is an idea of a sampling distribution. Now, I want to finish this in class tomorrow, but make sure that you have all of this other information so that way we can finish this and also talk about how skewed it is. We can look at variability, etc. Now, this is a dilemma too often happens to statistics students, trying to figure out what is the difference between a distribution of samples and a sampling distribution. Now I want to talk about a sampling distribution first, okay, because that's what we've been talking about. A sampling distribution is many bags. It's the average. So as I was talking about sample one, the average. Sample two, the average. Sample three, the average. Up to sample 50. And then, like tomorrow, we're going to be plotting this information using the Rosman, um, Rosman Chance app. And we want to see how close this is to the company's value of P. So how close that is to the company's um, expectations of what percentage of orange are in, their, are in each bag of candy. Now that's a sampling distribution. Here a distribution of a sample is that we are looking at one bag. And with that one bag we've got the 25 pieces. And we're looking at variability or looking at one bag and one bag only, the information or the number of oranges in that one bag. Sampling distribution, we're looking at it in a bunch of bags. Now, I mentioned the idea a couple of um, seconds ago 
of it gets closer and closer to the company's expectation or what the um, the company is expecting, let's say 40% of the orange. So here, a, an, an unbiased estimator occurs when we have all of these samples and the closer these samples get to the company's expectation. Okay, so let's look at this statement I have right here for the mean. Well, here we're talking about a set number of, of orange in the bag. Let's say the company is expecting whatever 40% um, times 25 is, that number of candies in the bag. Okay, this is what the company expects, but our distributions are going to give us values of 8, values of 10, values of 11. The whole idea is that the samples have got to look or get closer and closer to that of the company expectation, which is the parameter. But what if I'm looking at a proportion? Well, if I'm looking at a proportion, it's the same idea. Here, we're talking about if P hat, well, I don't know the values yet, but here we know the company's expectation is 40%. So here, is I give myself the 40%, and one sample is about there, another sample is here, another sample is here. I'm going to make this 20%, make this 60%, got this. I've got that. Okay, it cut off, but I didn't recognize when it cut off, so sorry about that. So as I look at this right here, the idea that this is the company's expectation. Well, in one sample, it's only 20%. Another sample, it is 10%. Another sample is 30%. Another sample here is 50%. Actually, one, two, three of these samples is 50%. Right here, sorry, it's crooked. Um, they're saying that in three bags, 60% of them are orange. So, how close is it around this? Well, the closer it is to this right here, that is what's referred to as an unbiased estimator. The closer this information is to that particular population. And in a few minutes, we're going to be looking at a bullseye, and I think that bullseye will really bring home everything I'm saying. But I want to continue to talk about how we can reduce variability. Because we know, and I've told you over and over again, that we can reduce variability by decreasing the sample size. But the reality is, that is not true by increasing the sample size. Now, I have to give you more, um, I have to be a lot more specific. What's going to happen is, the variability goes down as our sample distribution values decrease. So it's not just as I increase the number of pieces of candy in the bag, it's as I have more bags. And I'll say it again, it's not like I'm going to change the, the bag size from 25 to 40, which as a customer I'll appreciate if they don't increase the money, okay? But that's not going to reduce our variability. What's going to reduce the variability is, is me, as a quality control person, checking more bags of, of candy, checking more bags. So instead of having um, 10 bags, I want to check 20 bags or 30 bags. And then within those bags, seeing what the mean is. Next thing I wanted to also mention as I'm looking at this is the idea of what effects, what effect does the size of the population have on variability? Nothing. It does not. The spread of the sampling distribution does not depend on the population. But I want to add something to that, because remember that 10% rule? Okay? So, the population's got to be at least 10 times larger than the sample size. Or, here, that idea of that 10% rule, let me slide over so you can see it. 
that the probability that the population the size of the population has got to be greater than 10 times out of the sample size. So as long as that is applicable, that will help us to decrease variability. Now, last two things I want to wrap up is here, what is the difference between um, bias and variability? The idea of bias is you are trying to see its proximity to the to the mean. So you have a bunch of samples and you're looking at this proximity to the mean. With variability, we are trying to see how spread out things are. Okay, so even though the bullseye um, situation I want to do, I want to do that in class with you guys tomorrow. Okay, so again, with the bias, if the mu is here, we're expecting all of our, our values to be surrounding close to this. Okay, but when it comes to variability, if I give numbers to this, this is 1, this is 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, I'll make it 8. Okay, and here I've got a mean value here, a mean value here, a mean value there, a mean value there. Well, so like I was saying right here, you can see how spread out that is. And one thing about variability is that it's always looking at spread. So make sure you have all this stuff written down. Tomorrow we're going to be playing on playing with Reese's. We're going to be looking at uh, some bullseyes. And we are going to be um, considering things from World War um, II. See you guys tomorrow. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.